Hey there everyone, this is Michael Dugo, the Nootropic Reviewer, and during this video I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of ashwagandha and L-theanine, which are two of the most powerful nootropics around stress, around anxiety, and, and stress management, and a lot of people are actually using them for performance. And I have been using both nootropics for over five years, and to tell you the honest truth, I am not crazy about both nootropics. They are definitely not going to be in my top five. If you want to see my top five nootropics for this year, then watch this video over here, because these nootropics really aren't aided around productivity or making you earn more money, but they're more so related around feeling more fulfilled, enjoying your day a little bit more, and you being in a resourceful state through the course of the day. Now, other people may disagree with me on that, but I'm talking about my experience. There are going to be a few select nootropics that are really going to help increase my focus, increase my concentration. But if I was to choose one of these two nootropics as my favorite and what I would use comfortably in my stack on an everyday basis, it would be ashwagandha. And that's only until now. That's the journey of nootropics. You're always learning different things and you're disagreeing with yourself and kind of challenging your own beliefs. But it has been my experience more so that when I use L-theanine, not only can it make me somewhat demotivated, but I actually find myself tired. And I have found that if you do practice intermittent fasting, then um, L-theanine can do some strange things to your blood pressure that could leave you end up being awfully fatigued. So most people use L-theanine only alongside caffeine, and I think that way it's great. If you are unfamiliar with either of these nootropics, what you should know is that both of them are naturally occurring. L-theanine is an amino acid that's very difficult to find in foods and diet, but the one place you can find it in, in moderation would be green tea. However, you would have to like, you know, drink a good number of servings of green tea in order for you to actually get that L-theanine benefit that you're looking for, which kind of induce that state of relaxation, of calmness, and trust that it really is quite powerful. There's been instances when I've ingested 200 milligrams of L-theanine and like I felt the same way after I would feel um, from a 20 minute meditation, just being very present, being very mindful of my thoughts, like a nice enjoyable experience and of course something which will put you in a great mood. So it's nice kind of shorter acting versus ashwagandha. Ashwagandha, it's also naturally occurring. It's a root found in, in India. It's found in some places in the Middle East as well as Africa and it's been used for centuries for inducing a state of calmness. But ashwagandha that can do a whole lot more things than Altheni can do. Like looking at examine.com, we can see that they have basically compiled a number of studies to illustrate to us specifically what ashwagandha can be used for. And we can see that it's decent for stress. It's decent for symptoms of um, depression, for managing levels of cortisol, which is, of course is going to help us be more healthy overall. And as well, even with power output and testosterone, some people seem to say great things about ashwagandha at helping their libido, at helping their strength, at helping even their sleep. That hasn't really been my experience. More so, I look at ashwagandha like um, stress management, and anxiety you can definitely feel it working but it does take a bit of time to start working versus l-theanine l-theanine you can notice it instantly when you take it the majority of people they use uh, l-theanine when they need to let's say prior to a presentation let's say if they're taking a caffeine serving then we know that caffeine although it can really increase energy levels it often comes with anxiety with a little bit of jitters with a little bit of uneasiness and fortunately when you pair l-theanine with caffeine um, L-theanine can actually help to offset some of those side effects. Ashwagandha has a relatively long half-life, therefore the ideal way to, to actually use it is by taking it twice a day. This is the bottle from Nootropics Depot, and it doesn't matter whether you take it in capsule form or you take it in powder. The powder doesn't really taste all that bad. Uh, this specific form of ashwagandha, KSM66, I find is the best form around allowing you to be calm yet as well be productive. There's different forms. There's the ashwagandha root. There's also the sensorial form, and there's one especially potent form called shodan, which will really help you with calmness. It'll like put you to sleep. Uh, there's this one study that showed shodan helped on a number of sleep measures. When it came to instances of waking up, when, when it came to having a deep restorative sleep, Shodan did seem to have really good results with a small dosage of something like 100 to 200 milligrams prior to sleeping. And with respect to the L-theanine dosage, one thing to be said about L-theanine, um, it doesn't really matter where, where you get it from, whether it's Nootropics Depot, whether it's somewhere else. I've used it from a number of different vendors and it pretty much feels the same every single time. But what uh, does really change things is how much you use. So some people take a little bit less L-theanine to ensure they're not feeling too fatigued or too demotivated because it really can feel that way where you can have it at a higher dosage. Let's say if you if you have used like a lot of caffeine, for instance, there are scenarios when you may have 100 to 200 milligrams of caffeine and what the recommended guideline seems to be is one caffeine to two L-theanine, meaning 100 milligrams of caffeine would go well with 200 milligrams of L-theanine. When I work out, I'm usually using 200 to 300 milligrams of caffeine and I do find that using L-theanine or just a little bit of L-theanine helps to minimize the crash and the brain fog 
and uh, low energy state you typically feel when you're experiencing a crash. But a lot of people look at L-theanine for productivity and I think that's horribly misunderstood. This is something which is gonna help with stress management. It will help with anti-anxiety, but I don't really see it like as a nootropic that is sustainable. Where I find L-theanine could be suitable is if you're in a very like stressed out time. Maybe you're in a stressed out state. Maybe you've been working all day. And now you have to attend a, like a really important presentation. Um, it kind of just helps make you more centered. Like I mentioned, feel like that state you get in post meditation lowers your heart rate a little bit. But something that I've definitely learned for myself uh, with respect to nootropics is you want to be using nootropics that you could see yourself using every single day. You don't want to rely on supplements to take when you're feeling a bit stressed out because usually that can be resolved by having thicker skin, having some good mindset practices, saying affirmations, doing visualizations, meditations. It can be fixed. As far as a nootropic that I much rather prefer to take if I do want to clear my mind a little bit, then it would be rhodiola rosea, which is one of the best herbs around stress management, around fatigue management. It's also great as an appetite suppressant. Some people use it to lose weight and I've talked about it in depth in this video right over here. So to summarize in terms of the uh, side effects of both L-theanine, you're looking at headaches, you're looking at nausea, you're looking at feeling a bit demotivated. Whereas with ashwagandha, you're looking at um, demotivation, you're looking at brain fog. Some people do mention that it messes with their thyroid levels. Um, ashwagandha can be a bit interesting that way. I think with either nootropic, if your goal is productivity, if it's make more money, or if you're a student, get better grades, then you want to be mindful that these two nootropics can be better off um, put into a stack. So if you want to maybe consider taking ashwagandha along with Nupep because Nupep is really going to boost your motivation levels to make sure that you're still productive. Or of course we talked about L-theanine and caffeine. You can also use L-theanine and theocrine or dynamine which are two really popular stimulants as well. Would I still use either of these nootropics without a nootropic stack? The answer surprisingly would be no. I'm currently not taking L-theanine because I've noticed some of the negative side effects that I experience when I'm fasting. I am using ashwagandha but I'm only using ashwagandha because I have other nootropics that are aiding me with focus and with concentration. Things like paracetam, aniracetam, nupept, alpha GPC. I would really encourage you to watch a lot of my videos and you'll gain more knowledge specifically on this. And you can tailor a nootropic stack to specifically fit whatever lifestyle you have, whatever goals you have. For me, I'm all about productivity. I have found that ashwagandha has to some extent helped. Maybe it's just because I'm wired to be a bit driven. I'm very ambitious, but I do still like that ashwagandha. It keeps me in a good mood. I find that I finish the day feeling a little bit more fulfilled. I find that when I'm in conversations with people, I'm a little bit more able to have rapport and maintain a level of rapport because I'm not overthinking as much. So it's good that way. So my first dose of ashwagandha will typically be around 2 o'clock p.m. where I'm taking about 300 milligrams of the KSM 66 and then I'll have it once again around 6 o'clock p.m. Some days I skip that second dose. It just depends how I'm feeling and that's worked for me. And you'll um, commonly see it in sleep products so I wouldn't be concerned about using ashwagandha prior to going to sleep because people do find that they get a better uh, sleep experience once they use it. It's a little bit interesting that way. Like I mentioned, the important thing is that you're just getting in your serving once a day so that it's saturated in your system and you're getting the whole ashwagandha experience. And I hope you all did find this information helpful. What are your thoughts of the two? My favorite is ashwagandha. What's yours? I would love to know. And if you have a question for me, then go ahead and send me a message on Patreon or you can send me a direct message on Instagram. I thank you for your interest in nootropics and don't forget to join our Discord server where we have a 24 24- seven chat room. We're answering questions in a very time sensitive way and we're having a lot of fun. I'll look forward to seeing you all next time.